creep into Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Wayne, if you would, lead us to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and this opportunity to come to your house. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of being able to come and worship you. Lord, we thank you for our pastor. Lord, we thank you for the Lord that has given us the opportunity to come and worship you. Let us open our hearts and be receptive to your holy word and be faithful in your deeds. Thank you for all that you have done. And this we pray in Jesus Christ. We'll turn over to 446 this morning. Take time to be holy. 446. <clears throat>
you this morning as we gather for worship. So good to see uh, each and every one of you. And uh, we're enjoying this uh, little bit cooler weather that the Lord is uh, sending our way. Uh, we appreciate the flowers this morning in honor of Miss Holly Timms for uh, teaching Miss uh, Katie Caldwell uh, in Sunday school from, uh, uh, I'm assuming this is from Katie. So thank you, Katie, uh, for that. Uh, you see all the announcements that are listed. Uh, please note those that uh, pertain to you. Uh, just a couple I want to mention. Uh, please note that we, uh, we have started back our uh, Wednesday morning prayer meeting time at 11 o'clock. Uh, so uh, if uh, you're unable to, to get out in the evening, uh, you can join us uh, at 11 o'clock for that. Uh, also, uh, nominate, the nominating committee is going to meet down front. Uh, this morning, uh, right after the service, uh, in the nominating this year, be praying for them or uh, Jason, uh, Wayne, Lynn, uh, and Molly Land, and Catherine Schmidt. So be praying for them. And then uh, deacons, uh, we're going to need to meet for just a minute uh, after the nominating committee, but we're going to meet in the back in the conference room. So deacons, please uh, don't uh, don't forget that. Uh, we, uh, we're excited uh, as we prepare for uh, the Christmas backpacks. Uh, that's always exciting ministry that we have an opportunity to participate in every year. Uh, they're not due till November the 10th, but uh, we're already getting ready for them. We have the backpacks up uh, front, uh, and uh, we had anonymous donation to cover the cost of the backpacks, so there, there's no charge. Uh, but we do ask that you uh, sign up. Uh, how many, just put your name and how many backpacks you got just so we can kind of keep a record of where, where they all go and how many are out. Uh, and, uh, and it's up front here. Uh, there's also a, a box of Bibles. Uh, so uh, you can take that. Uh, if, if, uh, uh, if you need more information, uh, there's, there are these sheets. There should be some in the foyer uh, if you don't have one. Uh, but, so we appreciate your help with that. And then the children's uh, truck loading uh, is uh, uh, going to be, uh, well, you need to have it here at the church by September the 18th. That's a Wednesday. Uh, and uh, you need one of these sheets that list all the different items that they're, uh, that they're asking for. And uh, I see we're already getting some stuff. Uh, so we, we're excited about that and, and appreciate your help uh, with that. We... Uh, we have several to remember for prayer. I uh, want to uh, remember our local law enforcement office, uh, departments. They've uh, lost uh, some men this last week or so. Uh, uh, Carroll County this week lost uh, Taylor Briston, Bristow. Uh, Paulding County week four lost Brandon Cunningham. And then uh, Douglas County also lost Marco Miranda Perez. So I want to really pray for uh, for those departments and those families. We uh, uh, want to remember uh, Warren. Warren had a good report at the doctor and has got some tests coming up on the 24th, uh, but uh, he's got a leaky valve in his heart that they're working on uh, fixing. Uh, continue to remember Robert Groves undergoing uh, chemo. Remember Phyllis Teal's sister Joyce Russell has cancer. Uh, remember <coughs> Kathy Braswell's uh, brother-in-law and uh, Jerry Braswell, he's been moved to uh, uh, memory care. Have they moved? Have they moved him yet? Or are they moving him Monday? Tomorrow. 
they're moving him tomorrow. So just remember uh, uh, Jerry and his wife, Gloria, uh, and then uh, I understand Mo's uh, is, is under the weather and may have uh, COVID, so keep him in your prayers. And then uh, we've been asked to remember uh, Doug Holland. This is Danny and Jean Harrison, son-in-law. He's on life support for uh, kidney failure. What else do we need to mention for prayer? Anything else? Yeah. Yes. Mike, everybody remember me Wednesday. I'll be going to have an echocardiogram on the heart, so I just want to pray for good results there. All right. Was there something else? All right. All right. Any unspoken concerns? All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, for your goodness and mercy and all that you do for us. We thank you for the privilege to be here, Lord, and for your presence here in our midst. And Lord, we just uh, pray that uh, you'll be with these on our prayer list. We pray especially for uh, the police departments, Lord, that uh, have lost uh, officers this, this, the last two weeks. Lord, just uh, be with their families uh, and be with the uh, the officers and just encourage them. We pray, Lord, for uh, your protection uh, for them as they uh, they seek to, to serve us and to keep us safe. We pray for all of these on our prayer list. We pray especially for these that we've mentioned in these unspoken concerns. We pray for our country, Lord, that, um, Lord, we might turn our hearts back to you as a nation. Uh, and might seek to honor you in all that we do. Help us, Lord, as we continue in this service, that we might honor and glorify you in all that we do. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 him this morning will be <clears throat> 10 how great they are <clears throat> Take away my 
my sin, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou Out of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art! Then sings my soul. My Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art. listen to the words of this next song he didn't have to do what he did he could have said no he wasn't doing that but his love for us you know he did what he did out of love for us and the song is if that isn't love and if you know it and want to sing along with us sing along with us
Amen. Thank you, choir. This morning, if you will, turn to Luke chapter 4 for our scripture passage. Luke chapter 4. And I have to confess to you, I feel a little tired today. I uh, Willa had her three-year-old birthday party yesterday. And I, I watched from afar however many of her classmates were there, and they just wore me out watching them. <laughs> all, them all that activity and en energy, I wish I had a little bit of that. Amen? Uh, Luke chapter 4, uh, if, you, uh, if you're able, if you would stand as we honor the reading of God's Word. We'll begin reading with verse 1. And the Word of God says, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did, he did, he did eat nothing. When they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it may be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up unto a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give unto thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temp temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, ca cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall... Uh, not bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all of the temptation, he departed for him for a season. Let's pray. Dearly Father, we thank you for your precious word and for the privilege to be here uh, in this place. Uh, <clears throat> before your presence, Lord. And we just pray that uh, you have uh, complete freedom, Lord, to do as, as you wish, as you desire in our hearts, in our minds. And Lord, help us just to respond appropriately uh, as we hear the reading of the word and the preaching of the word. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We live uh, in some interesting days. We live in a time where uh, 
that which God says is wrong has been made right. Uh, and what uh, God says is right, uh, the world often looks at as being wrong. And we as the church needs, need to be reminded that God takes sin very seriously and God calls us not to sin. Amen. God calls us to be obedient to Him. Uh, and this morning we're going to look at this passage uh, here in Luke chapter 4 uh, of the temptation of Jesus uh, and see what we can learn about uh, our walk with the Lord and about what He did. Uh, but but uh, we also need to be reminded that what God wants from us is for us to be obedient to the Lord. Jesus, uh, in his responses to the devil here that we're going to be looking at in just a minute, are found in Deuteronomy. And uh, one of the things that we're reminded when we, we study the Exodus and the 40 years uh, where they uh, wandered in the wilderness, uh, that uh, God used that time uh, uh, to try to teach them one simple lesson and that was to obey God but yet that was a very hard lesson to learn uh, and we still uh, we still struggle with that amen uh, we still struggle with obedience whether uh, we're children and uh, we're uh, uh, we have parents uh, who are trying to guide and direct us uh, we even have adults who have a hard time uh, obeying the laws of the state and the nation that, uh, that are there for, for our protection. Uh, but here, uh, here we're going to look at uh, the temptation of the Lord. Jesus has just begun his ministry. Uh, he's just been baptized by John the Baptist. Uh, and uh, the scripture tells us uh, that uh, when he was baptized that uh, the Spirit of God came upon him uh, filled him. He was full of the Spirit of God and God openly declared, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And then I want you to notice that uh, once he was baptized, verse 1 says he was specifically led by the Spirit uh, in to the wilderness. Now, in the, in the Gospels, whenever it talks about Jesus going into the wilderness, we need to understand something. When I, when I think about the wilderness, I think about uh, the Cahutta Wilderness area uh, or uh, uh, the uh, wilderness, uh, I consider uh, the Smoky Mountains a wilderness area. Uh, and there's trees and there's water and there's all kind of game and uh, berries and, and all sorts of things uh, there. Uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus was led not to that kind of wilderness but to a desert. Okay, there wasn't anything. There was there was water. Uh, there were, there was some water there. Uh, I'm sure he had water during this time. But but there was there was nothing there, uh, and and the Spirit led him to go there, and he was there for forty days. And during that forty day period, we're told he fasted. He did not eat, uh, and he did that because he was focused solely. Upon uh, his relationship to God, he was communing with God and he was pushing aside his earthly uh, desire and need for food and God was sustaining him. Uh, and, and this was to encourage him, uh, to prepare him, and to strengthen him for the ministry that he was about to embark upon. Uh, but, uh, but I want you to understand something that uh, while he is there during that 48-day period and he was led by the Spirit of God, the devil comes to him and tempts him. Now, uh, I believe the, the, the text tells us, implies that he was tempted the whole time during the 40 day of, of uh, being in the wilderness. But, but at the end... Is, is where we pick up here in chapter 4. And this is where uh, the devil does what I call through the whole kitchen sink at him. Amen. Uh, he did his very best to try to trip uh, uh, the Lord up. Uh, 
uh, and uh, he, he, he throws everything he has at him. Uh, but then it says, at, at, uh, verse uh, 13, once the temptation had ended, uh, he left him for a season. And literally, uh, that means uh, he left him for a more opportune time, uh, which we believe is a reference to the, the passion and the suffering of when he uh, was preparing to go to the cross, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, struggling uh, with what, what was about to happen and what was about to come, uh, and uh, 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 being uh, uh, falsely accused and tried and beaten and then hung on the cross. But what can we learn from this passage, and how can we apply it to our lives? Uh, first thing we need to see is, is that Jesus was being led by the Spirit. Uh, if we want to have victory in our life, if we want to have a chance at overcoming the devil in our life, dear friends, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. If we're trying to defeat the devil by our own strength and power, uh, then we are going to fail miserably. We're going to fail. But I want you to also notice, not only was he led by the Spirit, but he was led by the Spirit to go into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Did you hear that? The Spirit led him into the wilderness knowing full well that the devil was going to tempt him there. Some have the misconception that if we're close to the Lord, we're not going to have any problems. Uh, folks, that's not biblical at all. Amen? At, uh, if, if, if we're, if we're uh, in the center of God's will, that doesn't mean we're not going to get sick. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have some issues with our car. We're not going to have some financial issues or we're not going to have some issues uh, with people at work or... Or, or other trials and tribulations in life. That just, that's just not the way life works. But we also need to understand that that also means that God's not going to keep us uh, from being tempted by the Spirit of God. In fact, what, uh, what do we find in the book of Job? Uh, Satan comes to uh, God and... and uh, says, look at your servant Job. He only serves you because you're so good to him and you protect him. And, and what did God do? God allowed him to, to uh, test him, uh, improve him, and try him. So we need to understand, dear friends, that, that uh, if we're following the Lord, that doesn't mean that somehow uh, we're going to escape being tempted by the devil. In fact, if we're, being, if we're following the Lord... That just means the devil's going to work that much harder uh, at us. But why does God allow us to be tempted? Uh, folks, he allows us to be tempted so that we can grow and mature as a believer in Christ and become stronger. Uh, it's kind of like exercise. Uh, you know... Uh, uh, Basically, uh, because of all that I've been through uh, for uh, more than six months now, I hadn't done nothing. And guess what? If I try to do anything, I give out. Uh, I, I just I don't have the strength. Uh, but I'm working on it. I'm I'm walking. I'm I'm trying to do some things to to rebuild my strength. But it takes time. And we need to learn to to step out in faith through obedience to the Lord. Uh, because it doesn't necessarily make sense to us, and the devil's going to do everything he can to try to, to get us not to obey the Lord. But folks, the Lord allows us to be tempted so that we will uh, grow and mature and learn that God is faithful. We also need to see here that the devil is the one doing the tempting. It's not God. It's not God, it's the devil. And we need to understand that the devil cares nothing about us. 
nothing about us. Uh, on, on the one hand, dear friends, it blows my mind that we are so quick to follow the devil and his lies when he has proven over and over and over again all he wants to do is send us to hell. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life for us, the one who demonstrated visibly his love for us, we, we want to turn our back on him and instead go with the devil. Folks, we need to understand the devil is not only real, but he cares nothing about us. And folks, he is strong. And if we think we can defeat him on our own, we are sadly mistaken. We also need to see here that we are tempted when we are vulnerable. Jesus was tempted uh, after he had been fasting for 40 days. Uh, now, uh, I've, I've never fasted for 40 days, uh, but I would imagine that if I went without eating food for 40 days that I would be pretty weak physically. Amen? Uh, it's possible to do, uh, but, but from a physical standpoint, Jesus would have been weak. But also, uh, Jesus uh, would have had one, one desire, one need that would have been screaming by his body. His body would have been screaming, I need food. Amen? Uh, you know, uh, sometimes... As children, uh, our children get a little bit of hungry and they, they act like they're going to die if they don't get something to eat in the next five minutes. You, uh, you know, uh, Here's Jesus. He's been without food for 40 days and he, he needs to eat. Uh, and so the devil comes at him and attacks him when he is weak physically and he is very hungry. Uh, but also... This would have been a spiritual high for Jesus. Him, he, he and the Lord, he and God had, had been in close communion for 40 days. Uh, and we need to see that the devil also comes to us sometimes after a spiritual high. Uh, after we've had a wonderful experience with the Lord uh, because we sometimes get just a little bit too cocky and we think because... Uh, because of what we've been through and because of our walk with the Lord, that somehow we're tough and we've got this. Uh, folks, we need to understand we don't have it except uh, we're, being, we're, we're being led by the Spirit of God. And Notice also here that uh, the, the, the way that the Lord deals with these temptations uh, is not to argue with the devil, to not to... Uh, try to uh, stir up a conversation, not try to explain to the devil uh, how he is wrong, but instead Jesus just simply goes back to God's word and quotes God's word to him. Folks, if we want the devil to leave us alone, we need to know God's word, we need to have it hid in our heart, and we need to obey his word. What was the devil's goal, his intention? His intention was specifically to derail God's plan and will for the Lord by getting him to disobey, which would have meant that he would have sinned so that he would not have been able to die for us, so that he would not have been able to take our place. But we know from... Uh, what happens here in this fourth chapter, and we know throughout the Gospels accounts, we know that the Lord was sinless because he obeyed God. Uh, in Philippians 2.8 it says, talking about Christ, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Folks, what God wants from us, what pleases God, is for us to be willing to be obedient to Him no matter what. 
How did, how did the devil attack the Lord? What were some of his tactics? Now these were uh, tactics specifically to try to get, to, get the Lord to uh, get off his road to, to our salvation. Uh, but these are also things that uh, apply to us as well. Uh, we need to understand that the devil always comes at us uh, and tempts us with things that we struggle with. Think about that for just a minute. Uh, now we all have uh, fleshly desires. We all have certain weaknesses and shortcomings. Uh, and we need to understand that, that when the devil tempts us, He's not going to tempt us with things that we don't have a problem with. He's going instead to come after us with the things that we are struggling with, that we do have a hard time with. And folks, he knows better than we know ourselves where our weaknesses are and where we're likely to stumble. And sadly, dear friends, uh, because of our human nature, sometimes we're, we're, we're all too eager to follow the temptation that the, de that the devil puts in front of us. He only comes after us where, uh, where we are struggling. So what did he do with the Lord? First, uh, we're told that, that he came after uh, his desire for food. Uh, and he said, Jesus, if you are the Son of God, why don't you command uh, these stones that are in front of you uh, to become bread and you can have something to eat. Now let's, let's think about this for just a second. Jesus had been in the wilderness for 40 days. He'd been out in the desert. There were a lot of rocks. Uh, he hadn't eaten in, in 40 days. And, and in the back of his mind, what's, what's on his mind? Food. Food. When... Uh, when I had my surgery and, and then uh, uh, had some, uh, there was so much I couldn't eat, uh, in my head, in my mind, I wanted to eat stuff, okay? But my stomach said, no, you can't eat that. My body said, no. And do you know what I dreamed and fixated on for quite a few months? All the stuff I couldn't have, you know? Uh, it, it, every time I turned around, uh, it even, uh, I, I don't look at TikTok that much, but somehow TikTok figured that out, and, and, and everything on TikTok was about food. Everywhere I turned, there was something about food. Don't you, don't you think that Jesus, uh, during that 40-day period, would have, would have looked down on the ground and seen some of those rocks? And he thought, Man, some of them rocks look like that bread my mama used to make. Boy, I wish I had a piece of bread. Boy, wouldn't that be something if, if, if some of those rocks <clears throat> were actually bread? That was already on his mind. And so Satan comes and, and just says, why don't, you, <clears throat> why don't you do what you can and just turn some of this, uh, turn this, these rocks into bread? You can do it. You have the power. Uh, and what he's trying to do here is to tempt him because he, he does desire food. He does need food. But he's also implying uh, he wants him to misuse the power that God has given him. But he also wants him to question uh, God's provision for him. Why did God allow me to be out here for 40 days? Why did he allow me to go without food? Why, why did he let me get so hungry? Why, why didn't he do something instead? Now folks, uh, we need to understand Jesus could have come up with all kinds of reasons to agree with the devil. Folks, we can always rationalize sin. 
In fact, if you catch yourself, if you're wondering, should I do something or not? Uh, is it wrong or not? And you start rationalizing why it's okay for you to do this, then more than likely it's not okay for you to do that. Amen? Uh, whenever we start rationalizing, then we're trying to make excuses why we should not obey God. But folks, regardless of, uh, of how things seem, regardless of how in our minds we, we make it out that it's okay, we need to understand we need to obey God first. And so Jesus responded, and he quoted uh, uh, Deuteronomy 8.3, and I'm going to quote the whole verse. He didn't quote all of it. But it says, And he humbled thee, talking about uh, the Hebrews, and he suffered thee to hunger. In other words, God allowed them to be hungry. And he fed them with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And we need to understand something here. Folks, the most important thing for everybody is not food. It's even though food's important, the most important thing is, is that we have the Word of God and we obey the Word of God. Amen? Because, dear friends, ultimately, what good is food going to do if we reject Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Amen? And so he's emphasizing here the spiritual nature of our relationship with God. And so Jesus says, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to use my power uh, for my own personal benefit. Instead, I'm going to trust God. God's going to take care of me. God's going to provide for me. But secondly, then uh, the devil uh, comes to Jesus. Uh, and he says, uh, 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 he, 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 uh, they kinda, he kind of takes him in a vision. Uh, where he shows him all of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, kingdoms of the world, best way to say it, uh, all of the uh, rulers and all of their power and all of the glory that they had. And uh, uh, the devil said, uh, if, you'll, if you'll go ahead and worship me, if you'll bow down right now to me, then I'll give you uh, all of this uh, power and this authority and all of these kings will bow down to you. Now, what's the devil trying to do here? The devil is trying to provide a shortcut to what God had promised. Uh, we know uh, after, uh, after Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, uh, scripture tells us that he was, uh, his name was elevated above every name and in one of these days every knee is going to bow. Uh, he has all authority over everything and everybody. Amen? Uh, but he only got that, he only received that after he went to the cross and was raised from the dead. The devil said... he. Not in so many words, but this is what's going on. The devil says, now I know the route God's taking you on. But Jesus, let's just be honest. The route that God is going to take you on is a hard route. Uh, it's going to require a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Uh, and it's going, to take, uh, it's going to take three years for you to get to finish that route. I, I, there's a much easier way. If you'll just bow down and worship me, then, then I'm going to give you all of this and you won't have to go through all of that. Folks, that, doesn't that sound like something that, that would appeal to us as humans? Amen. We want to take a shortcut. Amen. Uh, my, uh, my dad was always... 
good with maps back before we had GPS. And if there was a shortcut or a, a way to, to miss traffic, uh, he, he would know about it and, and he would find it. Uh, I learned, uh, I learned uh, several years back that uh, the GPS does not always know the shortcuts. Uh, I don't remember exactly where I was, but I was downtown Atlanta. Uh, I think I was at Piedmont, and I think I had to go to Emory, or I, I don't remember. I had to go to another hospital downtown Atlanta. And I thought for a minute, I said, I know how to go, but I bet, I bet if I punch it in my GPS, uh, it's going to come up with a better way. So I did. Uh, folks, I think I, I went by every house in Buckhead. Uh, it took me about three times as long as the way. Folks, shortcuts are not always short, amen? And Jesus understood that, that, that if he would have, have, have done this, then he would have bypassed what God had intended for him to go through the process to learn obedience and, and to, to demonstrate uh, sacrificially what needed to be done. Uh, and folks, we need to understand that the devil uh, is still trying to do that to us today. Uh, and uh, Jesus responded to the devil and, uh, and, and to his request. Uh, again, he, re he responded from Deuteronomy 6, 13, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shall swear by his name. And folks, uh, Jesus knew that the only one he ought to worship is God. Amen? And what we need to see here is we need to make sure we're not worshiping the God of self. When, when I first got into ministry and would talk about idols, it kind of seemed foreign and strange to me, but I have learned over the years, folks, we have a lot of idols in America. We don't bow, we don't bow down to some statue. We don't pay homage to some figurine. Folks, instead, what, what we do in America is we, we bow down to uh, different personalities and different things that are going on in the world, but most of all, we bow down to self and we let self be the God of our life. And you may say, well, preacher, how, how do we do that? Folks, we do that whenever we say, well, I know what the Bible says, but this is what I think, which is different from what God says. Dear friends, Jesus understood this, and we need to as well. It's not about us. It's not about making life easier for us. Instead, we need to be a, an obedient servant of the Lord and be willing to follow the path that He has for us because that's what molds and shapes us. Amen? And we don't need, we don't need to miss out on His plan for our life. But also, if Jesus would have done this, uh, folks, it would not have compared to what God gave him, would it? Amen? It would not have. Folks, whatever the devil offers us is a cheap substitute for God's will and purpose for our life. And then finally, he comes at him with one more. He takes, uh, he takes Jesus uh, to the temple area. Uh, to a high place there in the temple and apparently there are several places uh, there uh, when the temple was built where uh, when you, if, if you got up on the high points you looked down and there were retaining walls and uh, there are several references to uh, that you would be so high up that, that you would get dizzy just looking down. And it's probably from one of those places where the devil took uh, Jesus and tempted him there. And uh, uh, the devil said, Jesus, 
if you really are the Son of God, why don't you show all these people here and why don't you just jump off this building? And he uses Scripture, uses Scripture to try to rationalize why it's okay to do this. He quotes out a psalm that uh, God's not going to let anything happen to you and His angels are going to protect you. And uh, Jesus responded back and said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God uh, as you tempted Him at Messiah when the Hebrews revolted against God because uh, they were thirsty and did not trust Him. Uh, dear friends, we need to see here, this, this is uh, our desire uh, to try to make things about us, about what we want. Uh, and to try to draw attention to ourselves. Uh, that would have been something if Jesus, uh, if Jesus would have jumped off, off that high point and the angels would have caught him. Everybody would have seen it. And what would everybody have done? They would have thought, Whoo, boy, look at that! He must be of God! but they uh, would not have recognized him as the Messiah he was because of who he was. They would have only recognized him as the Messiah because of what he did. And folks, when, uh, when you do things for the wrong reason, Jesus then would have had to continually to have, have done more and more miraculous events like that to keep people uh, connected with him so that they would believe and he would have never died on the cross for our sins. And finally, the devil gave up. And he said, I'll come back at a better time. What can we learn from this to help against our defense against the wiles of the devil? Folks, we need to understand the devil is not our friend. He wants to get us to disobey God and to fall into sin. And, and his tactics are really pretty simple. He's going to get us to try to doubt the love of God and be unhappy with God's provision for us. Uh, we don't have what we want. We, we don't have what we think we need. Folks, we need, to, we need to have faith and trust God. Secondly, He's going to seek to get us to worship the idols of the world and especially the idol of self. Uh, and folks, we need to uh, stay away from, from that. We need to reject that and we need to serve and worship God and God alone. And we, we should never seek to attract attention to ourselves but instead we ought to be an obedient servant of the Lord. Folks, we need to be prepared. The devil's going to hit us when we're most vulnerable. We need to be prepared for that. He's going to hit us with, with what we struggle with, but that's why it's imperative that we know His Word and that we have it hid in our heart. Uh, but dear friends, uh, We also need to understand the devil's not going to give up on us. Folks, if, if you're here today and, and you don't struggle with if the devil's not after you, uh, that, that only means a couple of things. One is you're already following him. If, he's follow, if, if you're following him, he's, he's going to leave you alone. Or... Uh, <clears throat> He'll leave us alone as Christians if we're not serving the Lord, if we're not where we need to be, uh, then we're not a threat to Him and He won't spend too much time on us. But if we're serving Him, if we're growing uh, in the Lord, then He will come after us. But we can and will have victory in the Lord. I want to close with two uh, passages of Scripture to encourage you. Uh, because we know the Lord was faithful and obedient, Paul tells us in Hebrews, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy 
and find grace to help in time of need. And then Paul also said in Corinthians, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with that temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Let's pray.